Hi everyone, this is Gerard Lai from Poltan.org. We are in Portugal and we are here to see the new 7 Series. This particular unit is the 745LE, the plug-in hybrid version. So under the hood, the previous 2-litre 4-cylinder turbo engine is now gone. In its place, there's a 3-litre turbocharged straight 6 which is still packed to an electric motor. The total output is about 394 horsepower and 600 Newbic meters of torque. As far as you can see, it's a brand new design. It's still the same structure as before, but at the front, there's the larger kidney grille, which is apparently 40% bigger than the one before it. This particular car comes with the M Sport package, which is why you have the more aggressive front bumper and lower apron, which mimics the higher end M760 Li. The headlights are also new. These are BMW laser light and they are much slimmer than before as well. Because of the new grille, you have a higher front end by about 50mm which is noticeable from inside the car. Moving on to the side, you still get the same wheels but the air breathers as you can see at the side here are now vertical rather than a bit slanted than before. The overall design is exactly as before as well. This unit is the long wheelbase version, hence the L in the LE. And moving on to the rear, as you can see, it's similar to before, but you get the new headlights that mimic a lot of the newer BMW models like the X5. Hence the L-shaped uh, graphics you see here. It's linked by a chrome strip, and the lower apron is a little bit more aggressive thanks to the M Sport package. Welcome to the interior of the new 7 Series. It looks familiar as many of you can tell but there are a few changes here and there. First of all, the main obvious one will be the live cockpit professional. As you can see, there's new screens, new graphics, all clear and crisp. The one on the right is a widescreen 10.25 inch unit which is also a touchscreen. And uh, in front of the driver, you have a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster display which is similar to what you get in the new X5 and the new 3 series as well. Um, both are powered by BMW operating system 7.0 which is supported by something called a BMW intelligent assistant. Sort of like a Siri but for a car. Other changes as far as you can see is uh, the Harman Kardon system is now replaced with a Bose and Wilkins audio system instead and you get a lot more different trim and leather materials to choose from. So let's head on to the back. Uh, now that we're in, in the rear, where most 7 Series customers might spend their time, this particular unit comes with the executive lounge set, hence this dual captain seat style seating. It also gets the rear seat entertainment package, which is why you have these two rear screens. As before, you can control most functions from this Samsung tablet, which is ejected from before. Here. And if you do want to make any other changes, it's normally done by the driver at the front. Um, small tweaks or changes as far as we can tell is the AC controls are now buttons, so it's easier and more intuitive rather than having to go through the screen. And yeah, it's pretty much identical to before. Hi guys, now that we are inside the car, uh, I can talk a bit more about the driving experience of it. Earlier in the day, we were in the 750 Li with the 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. Clearly, that's a lot of power with 530 horsepower and 750 Nm meters of torque. Acceleration wise, it's incredibly quick. It's smooth, quick, the sound of the engine doesn't intrude into the cabin. On highways, it's a uh, quiet experience, the, the thicker acoustic glass really helps and those in the rear note that the other insulation makes driving a lot more pleasant and quiet inside the cabin as well. Unfortunately, the 750 Ally will most likely not make it to our country on the count of it being a big V8 engine and yeah, a 4.4 litre doesn't sound very tax friendly if you want to put it that way, in terms of road tax I'm saying. So, we are in the other car now, which is on hand, the 745 LE. It gets a inline 6-cylinder engine, turbocharged, instead of a 4-cylinder unit from before. 
the experts tell us that the reason for this change is because customers would like a smoother, uh, less intrusive driving experience when they are driving a plug-in hybrid vehicle. In the sense that when you are running from electric motor to the engine itself, the transition is not as jerky as one might imagine. Um, first impressions, uh, driving this in electric mode, it's quiet, smooth as you expect from a electric vehicle. And when you do need more grunt, and you put it into and you step on the throttle a bit harder to engage the six cylinder engine the transition is rather smooth it's not as jerky or as sharp of a feeling but a back-to-back -back comparison with the 740 le would be will give a better picture overall but first impressions it does feel a bit smoother so in terms of interior changes as you note from the b-rolls as well the screens for the 745 LE is a little bit different in that you have additional bits of information like how much electric range you have and the controls down here, they are split, they are made to be easier and more intuitive to access. For instance, the battery safe mode is now a separate item on its own and hybrid and electric are just readily available, the other two being sport and adaptive. Uh, this is different from the 758 Li, the non-hybrid version, which is a which has sport, adaptive, eco pro, and comfort. The hybrid setup itself has a total system output of 394 horsepower and about 600 Nm meters of torque. Um, that's more than enough. I think it takes about five-ish seconds to get you from zero to 100, which is rather quick. But the biggest draw here is the battery, which is now a 12 kilowatt hour battery rather than a 9.2 kilowatt hour unit in the 740LE. Uh, because of this, you get an all electric range of about 50 ish kilometers, which is enough to get you to most places on your daily drive before you have to plug in again. So, realistically, you may or may not have to depend on the inline six, but you could say it's usable in a sense. Back then, the previous 740 Ali had a range, I think, a little bit less, maybe 20 kilometers less. In terms of the ride and handling of the cars, both use the same hardware, so you still get adaptive air suspension with variable damping. The only difference is there's some slight tuning to accommodate things like the new engine, which is, of course, with two extra cylinders, will be slightly heavier and we've been told that it's tuned to provide a more sporty driving experience. Additionally, for cars without the hybrid system, like the 750LI, you have active road stabilization, which is electric based this time, rather than being a hydraulic type system. But unfortunately, we are not driving on the track to really engage, but based on my time in the 750LI, we could, I can safely say that body roll wasn't as severe for car this size and this heavy. For the 745 LE, unfortunately because of the size of the battery that takes up space, they can't fit the hardware for the active road stabilization so that's part of the something you have to give up if you want to go the hybrid route. So that's all from me from Faro with the new 7 series. We'll look forward to it coming to Malaysia soon but for now, cheers, have a good day.